this land of ours and fill sportsman's dreams. Enjoy what nature holds for us, her bounty never ends. Getting back to basics with the practical sportsman. It's always an adventure, no matter where we go. From a favorite hunting spot to the highest fishing hole. Outdoor life we all can share with family and friends. We'll do it all together with a practical Hello, sportsmen. Guess what? I've made it through another year. Unbelievable, despite all the financial and legal setbacks and all the problems I've had in the past year. Hey, I'm alive and kicking. Good news. In fact, we have quite a track record assembled, and we're going to show you our year in review, 1993. So stay tuned. I'm Fred Trost. We'll look at 1993 here on The Practical Sportsman. You say? Yeah, big one. Good job. Can you see them at all? Oh, man. Oh! <laughs> How do you do it? How are you doing? <laughs> How do you do oh, it? Oh, that's a, that's a seven or eight pounder there. Now, those are, we have right now set up in actually ascending order, I think, of, of size for sure, four portable ice shanties. Now let's go back to one that is made by, yep, the Minuteman right there. Let's go back to the clam. It's called, has two windows in it, called the clam. So there we have it, five different ice fishing shelters here all portable tents, and we just put this up in a matter of minutes, all five of them. You know, everybody's happy. We haven't had no complaints. crowd loves the event. Oh, they sure do. We <laughs> pull a lot of people up here. They come from all over. I tell you, this is quite an event. You have, uh, how many people come through here every year? Usually we have uh, about 200 to 250. It looks like we're going to be over that this year. Come here. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, look, this man is. Oh, hey, you're in there with two hands. I don't think so. Uh oh, here. Here we come. Oh. oh awesome. Look at that. Oh, no! Yes, the fish is in the net. But there's a slight problem to an angler like Dave who follows the rules, and that is this fish wasn't legally hooked. That makes, that makes the second one, but he's hooked out, so we gotta get him back. John Ford said this wasn't just grandstanding for the camera either. Right in the fence. Now these anglers weren't snagging. They were good sportsmen, and this steelhead went back. Keeping a fish that's foul hooked can get you some healthy fines from conservation officers. And while you will see fishermen who keep foul hooked fish, you'll also see some of them ticketed right on the river. Oh well, maybe next time. Maybe next time. Well, Deborah's concern about a black bear wandering through her yard is legitimate, especially when small children are playing outdoors. Most of the fatal black bear attacks have been to kids. A white muzzle, doesn't he? A white muzzle, scar on its side. If you know anything about this bear, let us know. My God. That's the first time we've ever seen a bear in our backyard. There he goes. Thank God he's gone. Okay, here, he, here it comes again. 
Now, this is our one grab man, Andy. Well, I already, yeah, I kind of lost on the one grab. There. Oh. <laughs> Outstanding. Not bad, huh? <laughs> Not bad. That makes the story. This is when bedlam breaks out when you're turkey hunting. Everybody gets excited, but Sam Rahimi makes a perfect shot in this gobbler. Flops like a chicken with its head cut off, but that's just reflexes. Way to go, Sam. Yep, we're allowed to have up to a 30 foot net here. Ours is a 25. On this side of the point, the water drops off fast enough that a longer net doesn't gain mm -hmm. you anything because you can't get out far enough without going over your waders mm -hmm. anyway. Randy Isles from Pittsford is the guy who invited me to this Peely Island of Smelt Fest. His buddy Brian Way works the other end of the net. Son Stephen scoops the smelt out of the makeshift trough, but there are other ways of seining smelt too. Yeah, look at that. Now, is that a little coho or? Yep, that's Jack. Coho Jack. How about that? Well, I'm very pleased. Now, there's a lot of people who would say, that fish is too small, throw it back. I would say, the size of my grill is perfect. <laughs> I agree. Huh? No, seriously, I mean, these are, that's the best eating size. That's right the there. best eating size right there. Now, how old is this buck? He's three years old. He's a three-year-old buck. And Come look out of at Pennsylvania. This. He got his antler injured just a little bit. We transferred him last week and uh, he was fighting with the other one here and he got a little blood on it but uh, but these antlers as they come out they're pink yeah they'll be pink and uh, he should be last year he was a six pointer we hope this year he'll be an eight pointer now you just touched those antlers of his yeah they're really if you feel them they're really hot they're full of blood just, hot just feel them they're real hot Ooh, man they are mm -hmm. so when they get injured they'll bleed real bad they're full of blood mm -hmm. they grow about a half an inch a day but but I, I a half inch a day that's quite a yeah. bit mm -hmm. well i thought that they were very tender uh yeah they are tender that's why if they bump them they'll bleed them real bad but i mean you were able to grab them and that buck didn't mind no they're not tender to you know the way i touch them mm -hmm. but uh, if they scrape them against a tree they're just tender to uh, uh the skin on them will break real easy I will just get ready to drop down if casey goes on me Down. I, I can grab him tonight. It's a little tense, I think. I, do you think we should he's get hooked. a net at this point? No, he's, hook, he's hooked good. I, I'll grab him right in the next pass here. He's just upside down. I was just trying to coax him. Just swing him over to me. Swing him over, sir. Oh, 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 Mark! <laughs> good job! Lander. That's a heck of a way to land him, Mark. Yeah. Hey, where's your camera? Your still That's camera excellent. Too. There. Yeah, it's in my uh, I, I knew right it's in out. my bag right here. I knew right out. You could tell that that was huge, couldn't you? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh look at that size of that wall. There's your That's man's incredible. Oh, yeah. oh, congratulations! What is it? Northern. Oh, it's a northern. Big northern. Nice northern. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice one. Might be able to get him right in here. There we go. Oh, there, he nice. Great. there you go. Oh. That's a good Whoa. <laughs> this is Lake exciting. Why? Nova Scotia to the west has a lot of famous Atlantic salmon streams, but with increased protection of Atlantics and catch and release fishing mandated, Newfoundland is developing a sport fishery for Atlantics. Oh, yes! Oh, yeah, he is bigger than three yeah. pounds. Yes! Isn't that beautiful? Congratulations, Fred. Deer never go farther than they need to for food, water, and cover. And in the summer, these requirements are closer together than at any other time of year. 
That means the deer actually are traveling less right now because they don't have to. Besides, the does are busy with their fawns and fawns don't travel far. The bucks are growing their antlers. You can see the velvety spikes on many of these bucks. Donna Vane from Chelsea was videotaping her husband Mike as he reeled in a walleye and there was a northern pike hanging on. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Got the video on that? Yes, I got the video. What am I going to do now? Do Wait. I have both or do I just have the, the walleye and the pike's too greedy to let go? <laughs> we can scoop Check them both this huh? out. I, think, I don't know if I got a boat hooked or not. Talk about greedy little. I don't even believe this. Look at this sh Well, I've got video this time, babe. He's just, he does not have the hook. Want to scoop him? He's just greedy. He won't let go. <laughs> Get the net. Scoop him up. Well, do you want me to video or scoop? I'll scoop. <laughs> Yeah, he's mid. I don't believe I have a hook. No, he's not hooked at all. He's just greedy. He just wants to go. I'm going to get him. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> loose. But here we have a situation that is very confusing. Um, on the state managed areas, I have gone many times with John, with a lot of us. We have shot birds, put them in a pile in the front of the boat. Mm -hmm. So just say the limit is three birds apiece, we'll have eight birds in the pile. Then we go back and, and someone takes all the ducks or geese or whatever, and I got shots. I will probably put them on the screen right here of me walking, carrying four geese. I'm two over my limit right there, holding them. Walking with them, somebody else carries the guns. Well, is that legal or not? Technically, probably not. However, if the guy's walking behind you carrying a gun, I mean, we all have discretion. We can uh -huh. use our discretion. Rob Torp is behind the camera, but do you have any idea who's behind the wheel of his car? Backing its way out the window was a rather large black bear, probably looking for donuts or candy it smelled in the car. What are you doing up on my car, boy? Well, don't think this is all humorous, though. A three or four hundred pound black bear can scratch the heck out of the paint on a car. Now, they can be destructive, but they're normally not hostile. Rob Torp from Brimley was unharmed, but he had an exciting moment on videotape. Can you believe this? Fatal antler attacks twisting, knocking the head and neck, and then attacking the head. Now, that's what makes me think that live deer key in on the head and ears. That's the most important part of a decoy. I don't think a buck would react this aggressively to a hard plastic decoy, but this foam apparently has a, a flesh-like texture. Now, deer do smell and lick each other when they meet, but here's something really weird. The doe acts like she's greeting this bedded buck but loses her cool and begins nibbling the antler. Very, very weird. Once again, Dandy has a bird going. Watch for it right in front of the dog. Hey! A rather dandy shot, I might say. Thank you, thank you. Come on, get first, Sport. Sport, come here, Sport. Come here, hey, come on. Sport, over here. Yes, thank you. All right, I do appreciate that. Yeah, the, oh, that's a ring neck pheasant. You know, they spend almost as much time sniffing as they do rubbing. Just watch. Isn't this interesting? What we used to think of as rubbing behavior, making rubs and even staging vicious attacks on trees, turns out to apparently involve a lot of sniffing and even, even licking the rubs. Well, now it's almost five o'clock. We've had a few deer back and forth. It's gonna probably go through the fence right now. 
they've been around the decoys, looking at the decoys, but they're not bucks, so they're not tremendously interested. Probably have 15, 20 minutes of, uh, of light left, shooting hours, maybe more than that. Better put him on the board. He's... There we go. Good job. Oh, jeez. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Ah! Oh, man, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Oh, look at this, John. Excellent. This is like 30 seconds of fishing, having it down on the bottom and catching this. Oh, I am thrilled. On the what stringer. A, on the stringer is going to go. Uh, we have Herb Millers, who saved Michigan with a 23 <laughs> point. You got this in Jackson County. Once again, Jackson comes out with a 10 inch tine, 22 and 5 eighths inch spread, November 8th with a bow. So the biggest bucks here seem to have been taken with bows. Now this is not a big one. Oh, it's a little bigger than the last one though. Get out of there. Whoa! Keep out of that hole. How about that? Well, I think as I keep going here, they're gonna get bigger every time. This was videotaped in March, a week before the snow deteriorated too much for snowmobiling in these backwoods. But this January, I'm going back when the snow conditions are ideal. This trip opened my eyes to a new practical use of snowmobiles, and I learned to spray snow on the camera. I enjoyed that too. In the kitchen, multi-time winner of cook-offs in this category, Lois Bone from Cebu Wing works wonders with a delicious looking and sounding walleye and seafood Alfredo, a popular dish these days. Yeah, it was actually my brother's idea. He said that you needed an Alfredo here, so I tried one. Well, then it looks good. It has the shrimp in it uh, on top. Is that Just scallop? for garnish. No, those are walleye cheeks. Walleye cheeks in yep. there? Yep. So you didn't supplement it with any scallops or no, any seafood? No, just the walleye cheeks. Ooh. Not many people know about walleye cheeks. No, they don't. Actually, they get busy and clean their fish, and they throw the rest of the fish away, and the best is throwing away the cheeks. They're like oh, a yeah. base scallop. Oh, yeah, and terrific. What we're looking for here is uh, taste and and the, you know what's in the recipe and I just want to show you what she's done what Lois did she took her carrots and she cooked them off and then she put them in cold water or probably ice water that keeps them like your carrots it'll keep real nice and orange and your broccoli it'll keep real green hmm. and that's part of presentation and I've got to give uh, her an A for that so I have to go with the walleye. With Lois. Yes. Okay well that's two of you we'll see if we what oh, we have now there's Mackenzie again hiding his <coughs> hiding his cards they were both wonderful also. I wasn't sure about the walleye and apple. I thought either hit or miss. It, it really hit. <laughs> what do you mean hit? You're pointing at nothing here. <laughs> well, you, that's how well it hit. <laughs> yeah. It hit and it's gone. And, and the, I'd say the Alfredo But I also gone. voted for the walleye. Oh, you did? Because to use a word that Pat would use uh, with women in the frozen food section, they were real perky cheeks. <laughs> they were, they were, they were, well, I'm almost they were afraid. Perky. I'm almost afraid now for Charlie Keenan. He's... <laughs> Well, you know, there, there, there comes a point in the contest where willpower really does have to take over. And you get two excellent dishes like this. And, and I could stop right here. I, mean, I could just sit and eat the rest of that sitting out there and, and just go home. You know, that would be it for me. They were both, both wonderful uh, uh, recipes. The, the apple, if you take uh, this dish in the fall with fresh apples, it's got to be spectacular but I have to go with the did? with the walleye and the, the Alfredo again you can't beat firm cheeks and 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 the, and with and with the pasta it's it's just splendid